What's up everyone? My name's Chandler and welcome to Coding with Chandler. I've been getting a lot of questions from people who are really curious about coding and they seem really intimidated on this idea of coding because it seems so hard and complex. Don't get me wrong guys, it is complex, but let me tell you something, anyone can learn how to code. I am someone who didn't go to school and get a computer science degree. I went through a coding boot camp that was only eight weeks and I ended up landing my first position only a few months after graduating. So believe me when I say anybody can learn how to code. But you may be wondering, well, how do I start? What languages do I use? What tools do I need to get started? This video is going to cover all of that information. So stay tuned because in this video, myself and two lovely ladies, Tiff and Steph, are going to be talking about the different ways that you can get started on coding and the things that you will need. So before we get started, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Tiffany Jansen and I am a software developer and technical consultant at IBM. So basically what that entails is I'm actually building up the product, doing the software development side of things. But on the other side, it's also consulting with the client that I'm building the product for. So I feel like I get the best of both worlds. My social handles are all tip in tech where I post tech coding and just really all STEM related content. Hi, my name is Stephanie Arpilia, but you may know me as StephJS on Instagram. I have a tech focused account and I post about life as a software developer, things like that. If you're interested, check out my Instagram. My current title is web development engineer at Amazon, and I build out the front end, the console experience uh, for a service called AWS Security Hub. The tech stack is mostly in JavaScript, TypeScript. Um, we use React and Redux on the front end, and then a bunch of dog fooding our AWS services on the back end. And I'm Chandler. I'm a full stack software engineer at Integral, and I've actually been in the tech community for three years now. Like I mentioned back in the day, I went through a coding bootcamp, and that was at Grand Circus. It was an eight week Java boot camp. It was super intense. And only a few months after graduating, I landed my first position as a software engineer, well, an associate software engineer at a company called Hello World. And then I worked for a company called Gambit for a couple years, it's a startup. And now I'm a full stack software engineer where I work with Kotlin on the back end and React.js and TypeScript on the front end. So that's a little bit about myself. Without further ado, let's get started. So before you start learning how to code, you must start by picking a language. And here's how. Before I get into the nitty gritty, there are a bunch of different coding languages. There's Java, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, PHP. I mean, you can go through this huge list of programming languages. And you may be wondering, which one do I pick? And well, how do I pick? So when it comes to picking your coding language, you must think about what your goals are exactly. What do you want to be when you get into the tech community? Do you want to be an Android developer where you develop Android apps? Do you want to be an iOS developer where you develop iPhone apps? Or do you want to be a web developer? Maybe you want to be a full stack software engineer. There are a variety of different roles that you can apply for when you have coding knowledge. So first you must sit down and think about what you want to do. Um, you can do that by doing research on the different roles. When you get a little bit of an idea of what you want to do, that can help you pick a coding language because coding languages actually serve a certain purpose depending on um, what it is you are trying to develop. For example, HTML and CSS is used to develop uh, websites like UI, the front end of a website. It's not really a programming language, but that's usually what people start off with. Um, it's also really readable and easy to understand, but that is what is used for um, to create the things that you see on a website, like images, text, things like that. So if you wanna be a web developer, I would recommend languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to start off with. Then you can start working your way to uh, more complex frameworks like React and or maybe you can use something like PHP. There's a variety of different languages that you can use with web development. So if that's something you're interested in, research the different languages you can get into for web development. Um, if you are interested in being a iOS developer, I recommend something like Swift. So I could go through all the different roles and all the languages that fall into them, but it requires a lot of research. When I was getting into coding and when I was a beginner, I actually didn't necessarily base my decision um, on what I want to do. I actually based it on, at the time, on what was more in demand. So I was doing research on, okay, what 
programming language is more in demand right now in my area. What are people looking for as far as hiring goes? Are people hiring more Java developers right now? Are people looking for more, so more full stack people who know more than one language? What are people looking for? Um, so I did some research on that and at the time I found that Java was the most in-demand language and I decided to go through the Java boot camp. So that's what helped me decide um, what language to start off with. So again, it takes some research, but sit down and think about the things that you want to do and then that can help you figure out what coding language that you should pick. One of the biggest mistakes that I made when I was a beginner at coding was I wanted to learn everything. I was not only focusing on Java, but I wanted to learn other things like Node.js, JavaScript. I was trying to learn everything at once and that made it hard for me to master programming. And I'm still not a master at programming. There are still some knowledge gaps in certain areas and I'm sure one of the reasons for that is because I was constantly jumping from one thing to another without sitting there and just trying to understand the concepts of one problem in one programming language. So that is my advice for you guys. Figure out what you want to do. Choose a programming language based on that or based on other factors like what's more in demand. It just depends on your goals, honestly. And stick with that language for a little bit before you jump into something else. Okay, I'm going to share with you some tools that are needed or that I use to start coding. The first one being a good IDE. And what IDE stands for is Integrated Development Environment. Okay, but what does that really mean? Basically, when you think IDE, what I think is it's a program that helps really a programmer's productivity. Let me explain. With a good IDE, it allows a programmer to edit source code, execute deliverables, and debug all from one application. Also with, for example, VS Code, which is the IDE I use, there are tons of different plugins that you can incorporate to make your life when you are coding easier. Another tool that you will need is a version control system for tracking different changes. A very popular one out there is GitHub. There are a ton of other ones such as Bitbucket. Um, those are the only two that are coming to my mind right now, but there are a ton and GitHub definitely is the most popular one. Other things that I think are required or really used a lot for programmers is not necessarily a tool, but stack overflow that will become your best friend. Let me tell you, when you have a question and you feel like you are completely stumped and you're the only one who's ever had this question, you're not. I can guarantee if you go on Stack Overflow, you will find someone that's had a similar question. So make sure to utilize Stack Overflow a lot. The last tool I wanna to talk about doesn't necessarily translate directly into uh, a tool for programming. However, it's something that I think programmers really is essential to use, which is having a good productivity or organization uh, app to use. And why I think this is so important is when you get to become a programmer and you're looking at your schedule for the day, you're not actually coding a lot of the day or the more senior you get, you're coding actually less and less, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and a lot of meetings come up, a lot of different design touch points. Uh, a lot of times there's meetings that kind of come up last minute. So you need to have a place where you can prioritize and organize your tasks. For me, I like to use Trello because I can easily just move around my tasks throughout the day. And honestly, I still use paper and pen to be one of the most effective ways for me. So one of the things I get asked a lot is how I started coding and I don't have a computer science degree. I actually went to UCLA and earned a bachelor's degree in geography and environmental studies, but I started learning to code on the side of my degree in college because I wanted to be able to post one of my geography projects on LinkedIn. And I realized that to do that, I needed to learn JavaScript and use some of the Google Maps APIs to uh, make my mapping project dynamic and accessible on the internet. So the first resource I actually started with was Code Academy. It was free at the time and it definitely got the job done. I learned about variables and functions and everything I needed to get the least bit of understanding to complete the project that I was working on at the time. And I think I've continued to take that same <laughs> learning philosophy with me uh, throughout my career so far, kind of learning and understanding the minimum to build uh, cool things. I'm a big advocate for learning by doing rather than learning by reading. I love books as much as the next person, absolutely. Um, I actually have some books to show you. 
that I've never read. <laughs> this is HTML and CSS. I got this on Amazon and I thought that um, if I bought this book and this one came with it, JavaScript and jQuery, I would just learn these four subjects by osmosis. They would just go into my head, but I quickly realized that that's not how learning how to code works at all. Um, since then I've made more mistakes and bought tons more coding books. I actually do like the You Don't Know JS series quite a lot, but I think it's an intermediate resource. So I wouldn't recommend this book series to a beginner personally, but I actually have read these um, in the last few years. So good for intermediate learners, but not a beginner resource. So as I mentioned, I don't recommend books for beginners who are learning how to code. I actually recommend tutorials. So finding tutorials on the internet that teach you how to build something by actually building it, not just uh, theories and concepts that you never apply. So my favorite place to find tutorials like this uh, is on Udemy. Udemy is an online platform that has tons of different courses in everything from like photography to coding. So whatever you're interested in learning, go to Udemy, use the search bar, say like Python development or web development or machine learning, and Udemy will spit out a list of classes. I like to go to the top five or so on that list and look at student reviews and the course description to figure out if people liked it, if it was a high quality class, and if I'm going to get something out of it. So that's what I would recommend to a complete beginner. So I just wanted to leave you with one last tidbit, and that is to remember that you are wildly capable. Coding is hard. <laughs> I know it, we all know it. I've been working in this for about four years and I work next to senior engineers and lead engineers who've been doing this for even longer. And we all run into bugs and issues and things that don't work. Um, and the process for everyone is pretty much the same forever. Uh, running into an issue, Googling your error or the thing that's not working, seeing what's on the internet that can potentially fix what you're going through. And then as a next step, asking for help. So finding a community or a peer that can look at your code and figure out with you what's going wrong. So maybe you'll find that person on dev Instagram or in a Slack group or maybe on Reddit, but find your community and use that community to help you stay engaged in learning to code and also help you figure out what's going on uh, when you need a little extra help. And don't be afraid to do that because we all do it. I do it every day. So that is my advice for you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you comment them down in the comment section below. Also, I wanna give a huge thanks to Steph and Tiff for being a part of this collaboration. Your guys' insight means so much, and I'm sure it means a lot to the viewers as well. We were all beginners at coding at one point in time. We were all intimidated and had imposter syndrome at one point in time, and we all got through it. And I know that if we can do it, you guys can too. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below in the comment section, and I will get back to you. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks.